morning. Good morning. Good morning. A warm summer welcome to those that are in the pews and those that are at home watching on their computer. <laughs> Pastor Brady and his family are on vacation, no doubt somewhere cool. <laughs> Pastor April is progressing day by day. Please keep them both in their prayer so that they will return to us soon. I am Margie Faulkner. A few years back, I retired from about 30 years in the pulpit, and I am honored to be trusted with this pulpit today. We start our service with our first opening hymn. Yes, if you will stand this morning, we are going to sing, Open My Eyes That I May See, and we're going to follow that by Jesus Calls Us. And last summer, um, I came across Jesus Calls Us at a hymn that I had never sung before, and as I was going through it, I came across a word that, as my 56-year-old self did not know, the word tumult, T-U-M-U-L-T, and it talks about the craziness and the loudness of things that God is trying to get through to us, and sometimes we have to stop and be silent and be still so we can hear him. So this morning, as I love playing the piano in the morning while y'all are coming in and you are talking because you're not paying attention to me, and that is fine with me. I used to have an issue with that. I don't anymore. Anyway, so as y'all are coming in and you are visiting, and I love the fellowship that you have, I'm not talking about that type of craziness and loudness. I'm talking about the craziness and the loudness that the Lord is trying to reach out through all of it. So as we open our eyes, open our ears, open our mouths this morning, Jesus is going to call us to say, come follow me. So let's sing these two hymns this morning.
see. Do we have any little ones going off to Children's Church this morning? We're going to ask you to come forward at this time. <laughs> join together in the affirmation of faith the words of the Apostles Creed these words were used in the early church as the baptismal creed and as we say them we affirm the basics of our faith so let us join together now with such an affirmation I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth in the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with warmth and joy. Help us to be gracious givers, dear Lord, 
both of our money and our lives. May this offering make a difference in our families, in this congregation, in this community, and in the world. Receive the gifts and tithes we bring this day as a sign of your gracious love. We pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. By the Holy Spirit and with the whole people of gather, God gathered here today, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's creation. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray for the people of God that as they sow seeds of love and mercy, the gospel may be received with joy take root and grow. Let us pray for the oceans and beaches of this earth, that people who gather there and fish who live there may not hinder one another, that pollution may be reversed, and life again flourish underwater and on the shores. Let us pray for all who have been afflicted by adverse weather conditions, May they be comforted and provided all that is necessary to recoup and recover from the unexpected storms. Let us pray for all leaders in this world, local, national, and international, that the seeds of justice may be planted where there is inequity and seeds of peace may be planted where there is disharmony especially in Russia and Ukraine. Let us pray for all who are on vacation or planning a vacation this summer. May they find good places to relax and recreate their energy and spirit. May they be nourished by your love and blessed by your creation. Keep them safe and bring them home healthy and refreshed. Let us pray for all who are suffering, the grieving, 
the ill, those in pain, the hungry, the addicted, the homeless, or those marginally so. We lift to you these spoken prayers and the unspoken prayers that we keep in our heart. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy. We join together in the prayer you crafted for your disciples and all believers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning 
is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, the 13th chapter. We begin with the first verse. That day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. The whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. And in another case, a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. Continuing with verse 18. Consider then the parable of the farmer. Whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries away what was planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown on the path. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Because they have no roots, they last for only a little while. While they experience distress or abuse because of the word, they immediately fall away. As for the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word but the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word and it bears no fruit. As for what was planted on good soil, this refers to those who hear and understand, bear fruit and produce. In one case, a yield of 100 to 1. In another case, a yield of 60 to 1. In another case, a yield of 30 to 1. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. Remember the nursery rhyme about little contrary Mary? It asks the question, Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? Today's scripture passage is a parable. Now, I'm going to ask you, do you remember what a parable is? Well, the teacher in me says I'm going to give you a little refresher. A parable compares something familiar to something unfamiliar. And it helps us understand spiritual truth by using everyday objects and relationships. Parables seem to compel the listener to discover truth, kind of like a riddle. Yet at the same time, they hide the truth from those that are too lazy or too stubborn to look for the meaning. The scene is set for us today in scripture. Jesus is sitting in a fishing boat teaching. He looks up onto the hills that surround the lake and maybe even sees a farmer planting. At least he can see the fields. So he uses what is available and easy to understand as a teaching moment for his listeners. Now it'll be helpful right here to understand a little bit about farms as they were in Jesus's time. They were uh, on the hills, they were crops that were planted around and around up to the top. It looked like a ribbon coiling up to the top of the hill. 
And there were farms that were fields that were flat, and the dirt was deep and brown. And there were farms that were in the desert. And as you can imagine, the soil was sand. And there were farms that were beside rock quarries. And the soil there was fairly shallow. And it had a lot of pulverized rock mixed in it. Now, farms in biblical times weren't big like they are in the Midwest in the United States. They were usually anywhere from what we would call a block to the largest was possibly two acres. That was big. And at that time, the way people got from one place to another, generally speaking, was to walk. And the best way to get from A to B was as the crow flies. And so through all of these farms, every single one of them had paths and roads. The paths were about, you know, like a footpath, about a foot wide, and roads were about one lane. Every farm had them. It was just a foregone conclusion. <clears throat> and because there was so much traffic on these paths, they were pounded hard as concrete. Now, Jesus tells us that we have a sower planting seed. <clears throat> Jesus is talking about a crop that is like wheat, where a farmer will take it and he will cast it out as he goes along. And so it spreads over a wide terrain. The first example is about the seed that had fallen on one of those hard paths. The ground was hard. It was so hard that it could not penetrate the dirt. And the birds came along as quickly as the seed hit the ground and ate it all up. Now you know how it is. You begin to share your faith with someone. And you mention salvation or faith or sin, oh man. Pretty soon, they get all fidgety and they find an excuse to stop the conversation and they go away as quick as they can. Or sometimes, they'll look at you with a blank face and say, what are you talking about? Or a few years ago, they would look at you and say, are you a Jesus freak? <laughs> yeah. You try to sow the seed. It does not hit upon soft ground at all. The words that you spoke are very quickly forgotten. The second type of soil, Jesus tells us that it is likened to rocky soil. Now, this is not soil that has rocks in it, but this is soil that is about about six inches or so above a shell of rock, limestone in the Holy Land. And <clears throat> the seed falls upon this ground and it springs to life and it quickly grows because of the heat from above and the radiated heat from below. But since it is so shallow, it doesn't have much depth, and its roots don't go down very far. And it withers away in the heat, or it falls for the lack of root support. But lo and behold, sometimes it blooms. But it always stays small and hardly makes any fruit or wheat at all. It's what we would call stunted. Now, sometimes people come limping into the church looking for support. They feel that they are stunted. They have been hurt by something. Divorce, death, a bad illness, hatred from someone, carelessness, unemployment or you can list many, many other reasons. 
They come to church. Now, that's where they belong. And they are so eager. They are like a drowning person jumping for the life raft. They just have to get their head above water. Now, for a few months, they just can't get enough. They are happy and they are thrilled to be where they are. They have people around them that support them. But all of a sudden, they begin feeling better. And they become disappointed that God doesn't do what they want them to do. Their prayers aren't answered the way they want them answered. Hmm. They find out the Bible study is a chore. They want to be selective about being called to discipleship. And the next thing you know, they're out the door. Now the third soil that Jesus has told us about is called thorny soil. Christ put it this way, some fell among thorns and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Oh yeah, the ground looks so good at first. Man, but then on second glance, you see that there are little things growing up into it and it's not all wheat. You begin to see that it's crabgrass and sawgrass and kudzu and ugh, thorns, thistle. You know how it is. Getting too busy working to get ahead, sleeping in on Sunday morning. I got up early all week long. Don't I deserve one morning of my own? Or going to the lake, since it is your only day off and you have a brand new boat. Or getting too busy and forgetting to pray. Or a good thing, donating all your time and extra time and money to a charity that is worthy and really warms your heart. But then you skip worship. Regular, ordinary, everyday stuff that just kind of creeps in and crops up. But it chokes out the newly sown seed. Ah, but don't despair, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus spoke of yet a fourth soil. A soil that is fertile and deep. Some seed fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. Wow, that's fertile soil. These are persons, Jesus explained, who receive the word and carefully allow it to take root in their lives so that fruit is born. The four types of soil represent some different responses to God's message. People respond differently depending on where they are and their state of readiness. Some are hardened. Some are shallow. Others are contaminated by distracting causes. And some are immediately receptive. What kind of soil are you? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Sure, you're blessed and thankful for salvation and you rejoice in that. Yet, do you find yourself responding differently to church at various times in your life? Do you run hot and cold or more apt for this parable, hard or soft? Do you shake those seeds off, or do you quickly absorb them? What kind of soil are you? I asked myself that question. And to tell the truth, I am all of them. I am Margie Margie, quite contrary. 
But this parable is no nursery rhyme. This is a spiritual example for us that is easy to understand, but one that holds an application with a bite. May we take it to heart. Now let us as a congregation join together in a prayer that I have had printed on a slide. <clears throat> let us pray. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Let my heart be good soil where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart be good soil. We are now gonna take those words and put it to music. Margie asked me last Sunday, if I knew this song, and I said no, but I went and looked it up, and it's called, Lord, Let My Heart Be Good Soil. Will you stand? The choir and I are going to sing this for you the first time, and then we're going to ask that you join us as we sing it the second time.